on the scene that uh, has stepped into that void and he has improved our bulletin even beyond our wildest expectations. The style and everything that has been put out here in the last few months has been growing great reviews all over the world, even Australia and uh, even uh, over Denmark have commented to me about our new bulletin. Mr. Shahid over there is the one that deserves the credit for that. He's also worked on our website and on our computers, our computer pages. And tonight he's going to give a little workshop on what it takes to get ourselves up to speed in the computer world. I must admit, I'm one of the last that was kicked, dragging, and screaming into the computer age, and I'm still struggling. But uh, he's pointed out that uh, in order to encourage and recruit the youth of America, we need to move in that direction. And uh, some of us will be left behind, but hopefully there's going to be a crop like Shahid that will run the club in the future, and it will be a computer-run club, it looks like. Shahid, are you ready? And uh, wanting to listen to uh, some of the gibberish that I have to say. Um, first of all, thanks, Bob. You know, much of the stuff that you said, I know you say it for everyone. You're just too nice. <laughs> you know, some of that I know I don't deserve. I just try to do my best anyway, and that's, uh, I'm pretty sure every one of us in the room do that for the club. Um, as you can see from probably the picture and kind of guess, you know, kind of like the theme of the talk tonight. Uh, this is basically my sister sent this picture to me one time and, you know, because my little one is just two years old and he is kind of like a cell phone kid already, you know, he, he takes my cell phone and does stuff with it, which sometimes I struggle with. He knows all of the apps and everything and games and stuff like that. Almost the same thing with uh, little Ibrahim here too. Uh, a message. We are actually heading towards that, whether we like it or not. Uh, some of us have already known it, so like me, who have small kids. So some of you who may have passed the age don't have small kids anymore, might not have recognized it because maybe your kids have moved out and you don't know if they're nice or something. Yeah, and grandkids. Um, but that's where the world is heading to, and this is something that I think it's better to uh, address it uh, before it gets out of our hand. Um, and then we lose some of the things that we think we could do, and we didn't do it in time. My last name, because there's too many Muhammads in our community. So I know some of you got confused, but, you know, um, especially Dennis uh, called me more. All of a sudden he said, where did I get that name? I said, I don't know. He probably saw my first name. I read it, and to make it more confusing, I read it as MD, which is an abbreviation of Muhammad. And so he kind of guessed it that it's going to be more. Um, anyway, when I came over to USA, I told my friend, just call me Shaggy. Because in our community, you go and ask for Muhammad, there's probably going to be 50 hands. Hey, I'm right here. Um, I work for the state, state of California, in downtown Los Angeles, uh, live down in Laverne. I have, uh, we're blessed with five kids, uh, 15, 8, 6, 4, and 2. And that's my little Imran, and that's my uh, six-year-old. Uh, you can see how much they love the pigeons that we have. We have a uh, very modest setup. Uh, we rent a home, uh, and we have, you can see, probably a chain-link fence cane. It's about 15 feet by 30 feet, quite big, I mean, like, for the size of it. We have about 12 breeding cages. You can see some of that on the back. I got the idea from uh, Bill Gribble, kind of tried to set it up with the way he had it. We have some <coughs> different breeds that we love. We're still not into shows and things like that. We just love it. My wife is a diehard lover of grill bags. Uh, and, and I love really nice pigeons. Uh, 
and it's very hard to keep this little guy away from the cage as soon as he can get in. You go and reach into the breeding cages and pull up the babies and bring it out and start playing with them. And you know, and anyway, I, I, we, me and my wife, we believe these are all good for the kids. You know, we struggle to keep them away from the computer and the cell phone. Trust me, it's, it's hard to do that. Some of these things are helping us a lot to work, and we all have gone through, have gone through it more. That was what was before that you know, kids, the parents would train their kids, um, even in terms of this one particular hobby, pigeon hobby. They would train their kids. You know, dad would train the son or something that hey, this is the way to take care. And they, the kids would used to grow up with the responsibility because you know, raising pigeons has responsibilities. You've got to feed them, take care of them. You know, uh, sometimes they become, become sick. And all that stuff, you have to go through it. And it's a timely process. It's not like today where you just open up your cell phone and, and you find everything that you need in there. Um, but now, things have become more like what I have down here. And, and basically, that's, that's us. Uh, we have become. And the reflection of that is into our kids, actually. Sometimes we do blame our kids. Yes, they are to blame, maybe, to some extent. But maybe we also got to look at what's down here. Am I doing enough for my kids? Am I giving enough time for my kids to transition them away from where the rest of the world is running fast? Or this day is connected, we all know it. How? <coughs> to the internet. Um, we got plenty of devices surrounding us from, from all sides. Even the TV that we watch today is nothing like what we have. We have hundreds of channels. We are like the click of a button, I can watch what's happening on the other side of the world in the uh, I mean, so basically, everything is connected together to the internet. Now, of course, we used to have, in terms of pigeon hobby, you know, it all started way back with the pigeons, you know, the green carriers. Now it's 100% maybe replaced by that. I just put it in there just to give you a perspective of uh, where things are heading. Maybe in a few decades, things have changed from here to here. But that's not the only thing that changed here. The people's ideology, the mindset, everything has changed here. With that. It's not that we're just using internet. Uh, the way we look at the world has completely changed. We are more restless. We don't want to sit down one second with something. Uh, actually, there was a nice article uh, uh, that even the cartoons that they make, you'll see the scenes are constantly changing. So the people who make those cartoons, they are actually raising a generation who constantly want more. So it's consumerism which is affecting us. All of this is actually connected to what I have to say. And I want to I wanna connect it, giving you a little bit of my story, how I started with the fancy pictures. Nothing very fancy, but you know, it's my story. I just wanted to share with you. We all of a sudden had that cage that you saw, the chain link fence cage. So my wife, you know, a couple of years back said, well, we have some pigeons. And I used to be always a bird lover. I used to have pigeons way back until some people stole all of my pigeons and probably they ate those uh, when I was a young kid. And my mom never allowed me to have any more. I said, well, the next time you get it, they're going to get it again. But then I raised, I raised cocktails, uh, parakeets, and stuff like that, you know, uh, a lot of birds, uh, different types. Uh, so I had that in me. My wife's dad used to raise fancy pigeons back home in Bangladesh, where I come from originally. Uh, and he would have many different breeds. Uh, I don't know the exact names, but she recognizes some of them from the pictures sometime. So a couple of years back, she said, well, why don't we have some pigeons? I said, OK, you know, let's get them. Some. So I talked to one of my friends that we're thinking about having some pigeons. He said, well, my next door neighbor has some pigeons, and he has some of those flying kinds. And she said, he took me one day, and they gave a, he gave us, it was nice enough, gave us a free pair of pigeons. We brought in, it's just regular homing pigeon. Um, very productive. Within one year, we got 10 or 12. Um, <laughs> so that was nice. You know, the kids loved it to death and everything. One day, 
to buy, and, and we live in Laverne, so come on, it is very close to us. Uh, we used to always go there to buy that buy our feed. One day my wife and I go there, and we see this beautiful, beautiful pigeon we fell in love with. It was um, Saxon, um, uh, one, one, a pair, that, the kind that will dribble races, um, Saxon saw, black and white. And my wife said, this is the kind that my dad used to have. I gotta have it. I said, well, me, hold on. Let me see how much they're asking. And it's like that. But you know, uh, Ken Davis sells it for pretty, pretty cheap. So we got that pair. And uh, something happened. The next day, all of a sudden, the cock died. And, and we, we just don't know why. It's perfectly healthy, beautiful pair. We still have the hand in it. It was so beautiful. Um, we didn't know. So, and my wife was devastated. You know, she is a very emotional type of person. She loves her kids very much. So pigeons are kind of one of kids. She said, "You gotta replace it for me." I'm like, "Honey, I don't even know what kind of pigeon this is. I, I've never seen this pigeon anywhere in the world." Kind of like to her. <laughs> I, what I what I did was, you know, to make her happy, I immediately went online <coughs> and, and see what I say. I said, immediately it went online. online hundreds and hundreds of images. I started scanning, 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 and, and, and I found something very similar. I thought, I got it, I got it, and it's a helmet. But then I realized, well, I'm saying now it's a helmet. At that time, I had no idea what the helmet was in Saxon. And so, you know, a couple of days later, I realized that that doesn't have the muffs. I said, well, you know, that's not the one. So then I searched more and more and more and more and more, and after three days of searching online, I found it. I found the website for the Southern California Cow Pigeon Club. Wonderful <laughs> website, thank you. There's the picture right there, a big, beautiful picture of the exact same one that we have. I was so excited, and you know what I did? I had no idea what to do. I knew no pigeon people at all. I went to that club website, I found out the people who had pigeons and their names were listed. I tried types those names on the internet, did everything I could. Finally, I came up with three, four different email addresses. I emailed them, and Bill Gribble was kind enough to return my email immediately. He said, and I, and I attached the picture of the hen that we had. I said, We're de I'm desperate to find a mate for, for the hen. Bill Gribble said I might be able to help. So he gave me his number. <laughs> yes. This is happening how long ago? This is this only is six or? months back. <laughs> Okay. This is only six months back. Uh, so I went to Bill Gribble's place. I, uh, place. I took the hen with me, and uh, I stepped into his backyard, and my jaws dropped. I'm like, what? What is this? He, his his scope is probably bigger than my house. You know, <laughs> I, I've never imagined something in my life that people can uh, ask him, Bill, how many. First, you have there, you say about oh, 300 or so. Well, I'm like, I, I was guessing. I, I couldn't imagine somebody having a tree three parts. Of course, then I like, found out a lot more. People can have a lot more. But Bill did something way beyond my imagination. He said, you know, when you come over here, he put the hand in one of his uh, holding cages. He got three cocks, you know, one, you know, one of the best ones that he had in reserve. He, he chose those three, and he looked at the band, and now I understand a lot more what he did at that time. At that time, I was like, oh, this guy's just giving me some words. Um, but now I understand. He looked at the band, and he was, as he was looking at the parts, he was telling me what he's looking at, and he was looking at the bands, and he was saying, this one's five-year-old cock, so it's not going to be that great for you in the long run, because it's going to get closer. This is the two-year-old cock, so let's have it in there. He put three cocks next to it and said, what do you choose? Which one do you choose? I'm like, real, I, 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 you know, I've never even seen these pigeons in my life, so I don't know. You, you pick something for me. So he looked at the three, and he picked the best one out of them, and he said, there you go, that should be a good mate for this hen that you have. Then I got a little bit of courage. I said, Bill, can I take a few more pictures from you? Because he has those wonderful colors, right? So I end up taking four pairs from him. <laughs> <laughs> and trust me, every single one of the hen, he did the same. He pulled out three. Every single one of those cock, he did the same. He pulled out three. And he found the best ones for me from his holding garden. 
I never forgot that experience. I, I, you know, I couldn't imagine somebody would do that. And he charged me next to nothing. Honestly, I'll, I'll tell you. He said, how about if I tell you $60? I, I couldn't come I said, can I give you a hug? And he was, and this is the first time I met this guy, right? So I gave him a big hug. I said, you know what? Um, <laughs> from Brooke Wellenstein, very similar treatment from Bill Watson, very similar treatment from Dennis Flair, and others. I, you know, there's going to be too many names to mention. Even Fred, I mean, uh, even Fred. Even Fred. Really? I'm sorry. I said even Fred because I didn't say that. He has the straightest face. Anyway, um, it's 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 you know, later on, of course, we've got more chairs. Now we have about, you know, 30 pigeons. We try to keep a limit uh, on it. Uh, they're all going by. The reason I wanted to share this, and there's a lot more to this story, because some things happen later on and then uh, other stuff, but I don't want to get into the details of this too, and we don't want to digress too much from the, what's in the topic here. See, what I say in the beginning is, take my, you know, just, just not my word, I started to the internet. Uh, I mean, like, look at me, I become a fancier, or maybe just a hobbyist, and not a fancier, but a hobbyist of the fancy pigeons. But the way it started, you know, I, I had to go online and do those research and stuff like that. If I didn't have those, you know, in my hand, if I couldn't do it, couldn't get those names or emails, I don't think I could. I'll probably keep the hen for a few days and then let it go or have it made with one of the homing pigeons that I had. And, oh, by the way, we got rid of all of our homing pigeons except for the first pair we got. Is, he loves that too much, so I can't get rid of that. <laughs> um, but, but internet can be a tool, can be a blessing, which every single one of us here in this room can use to help this hobby. I know you folks are working hard day and night, and that's something that I love it. Every time I walk into this room, I see. So the first night I came in here, it was the auction night, and I saw people buying stuff for $300, $400. And I asked Bill, Bill was my only friend at that time, and I said, well, what's going on? I mean, like, you know, they said, well, you know, they're helping the club. They're helping the hobby. I was surprised. We are not as adapted as our younger generations are, of course. Um, Let's not look at it as a negative side of life. You know, when, when, I, when I started, yes, I say some negative things. Yeah, it has made our lives more stressful, maybe we're uh, less patient with stuff. But it has a lot of good sides. Internet can be a blessing too. We can use it. We can use this tool in many different ways, which unfortunately we're not using to the fullest capacity. So, I want to go a little bit into what was my observation when I came in to tie with that story how I started. And Bob actually asked me one day over the phone, and Bob's been uh, phenomenal with you know, giving me lots of maps, lots of information to help me do the stuff that I'm doing for the club. Bob asked me, Shahid, can I ask you, what's your observation of the club? You're just a brand new member of the club. You walked in, and what's your observation? Sometimes it's, it's good to see from somebody else, through somebody else's eyes. There's quite a few. Hey, I, I didn't like that white cake that Bob used to bring every single wedding night. Sorry, Bob. I'm just you know, maybe too expressive. I, I called Bob. I said, Bob, can we have a chocolate cake maybe this, this month? And Bob got a chocolate cake. I was happy. But, you know, and, and, and he got something with strawberries. You know, That's great. There's quite a few things. However, I guess the biggest thing, and I, I noted, and that's the only thing that I put in here, is the generated effect. I put down controversial in the bracket. <coughs> Maybe some of us don't like that word, generation gap, or phrase generation gap. Maybe we don't want to think about it. Maybe we have put it on that shelf. Every single one of us is uh, getting older. I'm 43, I have no problem in saying I'm 43, I'm not 20 so something. Now I'm 43. <laughs> and that's every single one of us. 
My biggest observation when I walked through that door the first night was, you know, there's a big generation gap. Where's the, where's the younger folks? Where's the fanciers? Where's the breeders who are at my age, younger, and stuff like that? Where are they? Um, that I have seen consistently. I know you're 20 something. You know? They're all playing. No, they're all, I'm 20 something. They're all playing. Uh, I know. I know. I know. Yeah, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. yeah they're, they're on their cell phone or stuff like that. They don't want it. But that may be something that the board and the club can shoot at rest together um, so that we don't find ourselves in a situation where. There's, there's no no way we can make up for that gap. Because there's still time. There's still people here who are veterans. There's still people here, you know, maybe four, five, six of us who are trying to bridge that gap. And if we start working now, making a good plan of how we approach things for the next generations to come, I think there's a good hope for us to continue. And this is exactly the way it happened with LFPC. All of you know the history of LFPC. I read only some of it. Bob gave me his book. You know, during the 60s, Bill Gribble and some others, uh, you know, Rose Brick was there, and, and Chuck was there, and some others. Uh, you folks kind of stepped forward and said, you know, we're going to bring a change. Well, that's been quite a few years. Uh, has that change happened since then? Um, that's not at least what I heard. I'm just a new member. You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at, at the club in the last five, six months. But I, I get a flavor of the history of the club. Bob and Chuck. Chuck and I have been in touch almost every single day, either doing an or phone call, and he's phenomenal. He's got a mind which is like a book, open book. He can remember names and dates and everything. You know, if any one of you got sick and told Chuck I got sick on that day and you don't remember which hospital you went to, call Chuck, he'll tell you which hospital you went to. <laughs> 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 really, it's like that. But what I'm saying is, from what I got from these folks, is that that phenomenal change has not happened since that time. And maybe, maybe that's something we gotta address. Um, whether you like it or not. That's why I put that word controversial. Yeah, nobody wants to say that our club is shrinking and doing In general, everybody should agree that the pigeon hobby in general is shrinking. You know, there's rules and regulations and stuff like that, which is not helping us a whole lot. I used to tell my neighbors, say, come look at my pigeons, I've got some wonderful pigeons. After a couple of meeting nights, I kept my mouth shut. I know better. I don't, I, I don't want my kids to be taken away. Yeah. So a lot of these things are not helping us. Of course, with the technology and other things where people are into, you know, people are more willing to stand in line for six days to get iPhone 6. They can't wait a few days for a pigeon to lay eggs and then, you know, 18 days is going to have, oh, oh my gosh, who cares about that? I can look at the picture of how the babies have. It's amazing. You can even find pictures of a pigeon actually laying an egg. Half of the egg is inside the bird. I mean, it's a little bit gross in the but, but it's there. So you know, oh, I can see. And I forward this over to the board so that you folks can forward this over to the club and discuss this issue of the generation gap and see what can be done. And Bob and I talked about it a little bit. Maybe the age range you can look at is maybe 18 to 50, something like that. Under 18 is minor. You know, you want to have a parent or somebody to come in above 18. And then, you know, between 18 and 50, maybe we can do some things. And of course, if we, if we uh, do brainstorming together, we can get some stuff done, definitely. But if we want to address this issue, then first, we're going to have to say, okay, well, who are we missing, you know? I just say something that, okay, maybe 18 to 50 or something. But that's a matter of discussion. Why should we even care? I mentioned some of these, but I, I'm sure some of you folks, other folks, will have other things to say when the discussion is in a group. Other group things are going to come up. Uh, then, if we say that, yes, we have identified a missing group, and if we can say that, yes, we do care, that the group is missing. Then we go on to the next one of addressing why missing. 
Because that's the key. Why is it? If we can identify some of the factors, maybe we can do something to change those factors. We are not going to be able to change the world or the way it's headed. But we can write along some of the amenities that this 20th century is providing us and actually can get some things done to help our hobby. That's where the practical action oriented approaches will come. We can talk about these things all day and night, sitting in one room, not going to get us anywhere unless we make action plans which are accomplishable and which can be done to get us to where we want. I thought, well, you know what, all of this hopefully I will convey to the group. And this was my observation in the first couple of meeting plans. I said, okay, I'm going to you know, convey this when the time comes. People will know me and then, I mean, you know, I'm just going to be here. Uh, but it doesn't, it shouldn't stop me from doing what I can. One of the things that I didn't mention when I was searching for the pigeons, I, I did find the Los Angeles Pigeon Club website. I went to that website and um, it's nothing, it, it's not saying anything bad again about a person. But the website looked like a dreadful website to me. It looked like a dead website. There was, the last time it was updated, it was probably 2013 or 2012, something like that. It had old dates and stuff like that. On the front page, it has everybody's personal information, including their name, phone number, email address, which shouldn't be there, of course. Of course, yeah, it's a good way to call Fred, but he could get a lot of prank calls from that, too. People can search online, doing hundreds of website searches with a click of a button and can pull up phone numbers from there. Uh, anyway. Uh, and I need to mention, yes, that the group meets in Lambert Park, who knows where that is at that time. And, you know, it looked very dull and stuff. So I was like, oh, maybe it's a, excuse my word, maybe it's a bunch of good lumps meeting somewhere, flying some pigeons. So, you know, I see some pigeons flying over my house all the time, so it's probably something like that. I don't know. It's, it's Bill Gribble, actually, when I met him. It's Bill Gribble who actually told me that she did what she did to me. And that's, I said, you sure, Bill? He said, yeah, 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 you're going to like it. And then he invites him, calls me, and invites me that, well, okay, we're going to have an auction. I said, why don't you come over? That's when I got the courage to come in. And I saw something which amazed me. I'm like, it's a decent folks. There's over 50 of them in this room. They're doing real stuff. They're doing real business. Um, anyway, so I say to myself that, you know what? These are something that I can do. I can maybe work on the website. I can maybe help in something else. And some of the other stuff actually came in later on. So right now, yeah, thank you, yes, we have a brand new website. We have a new discussion forum group. We have our own YouTube video channel. Um, and I'm going to go through each one for a few minutes, uh, not to make you bored, but just to give you a flavor of what's in there. Okay. We have our problem email address, we have a new look on our bulletin, and all that stuff. I'm not saying this to get a pat on my back. This is not just, you know, just being a boss or something, and stuff like that. Uh, that's not boasting from this side. Rather, can you please turn the body down? All these are listed on the bottom of the email. I mean, at the bottom of the oh. Yeah. You're not on <coughs> there. Uh, please send an email to the lmpjumprod.gmail.com. It's on our bulletin, on all of this information. Our website address, our Google group address, for our YouTube <coughs> channel, and our uh, email address is on the bulletin down at the bottom here. So you can email us at any time. This is a good discussion for us. See, we, we can make announcements through here to a lot of people in, in one shot. Like here, <laughs> as soon as Abraham. <laughs> there is an uh, announcement here about the Great Western Pigeon Show. Um, we got an announcement as soon as uh, John DiCarlo and John Hefner's block burned the same day, within a few minutes, we got an announcement through here. We all knew about it. So this is very powerful, uh, you know, in terms of uh, communicating with others. Next, I'm going to show you, this is our email address. It's called lapigeonclub at gmail.com. 
why should we have our own personal email addresses on our website, which is on public domain, and get prank emails or uh, scams? See, we're getting a lot of emails on a regular basis, um, and sometimes I forward those over to Bob or Chuck or somebody else to get an answer. We've had emails from a guy in Germany today, Fred, I forwarded it over to you. He wanted to be our member, uh, well, a guy in Minnesota or something, or uh, where, where was he? In another <coughs> state. A guy in Germany wanted some sort of a bulletin from pigeons from us. Uh, uh, a Middle Eastern guy wanted to buy some Oriental frills, and I contacted Bob, he told me to call, um, uh, we have had at least four or five emails, and, and this is within the last few months, we've got four or five emails about people finding wounded birds, don't know what to do with it, you know, um, stray birds, so all sorts of stuff we're getting, and yeah, this is a help to the pigeon hobby, this is through that, and actually the, the very first one, Miss Melissa, she got a bird which lost one of his tail feathers and couldn't even fly. And I've been in touch with her, you can see about seven emails with back and forth between us. I've been trying to help her out. And she finally decided to keep the bird. Well, who knows? We might get some something out of that lady sometime pretty soon. I mean, hey, uh, we got this uh, lady even from their so website. Is there something they have on the news? They get you know, the of the people that, that go there, you know, and what they do and stuff like that. There wasn't anything. So anyway, what I started, and again, this is for, you know, I said, well, I'm going to do my part. Every meeting night, the pictures that I get from my camera and Bob's camera, we make a nice slide presentation. So this is July, then we got August, then we got September. And then also, whatever presentation we have, um, we make a video of that and put it up on YouTube. You know, people look at that, people get to know us, and, and actually the biggest benefit is, you know, they know that they have some people who they can contact if they need to. Just like I was lost one time, and I searched and I couldn't find anything. So at least, you know, we get comments sometimes occasionally on our videos. We already got about 10 people who are subscribing to our channel, so every time we put a new video, they automatically get a notice on the internet. They must probably know you, of course. And they saw the videos of you guys here, and he just, you know, he expressed his emotion, good old folks, um, our friends. So this is also very powerful. There's millions of people who are on YouTube all day long. And then, you know, when we say this, yeah, part of it is also this. Well, let's help those people who are doing this all day and night. And maybe, you know, one day they will come to us. And, and, and ask for help, and we can help them. It's our last the website. <laughs> um, these are these are pictures taken by our folks, so uh, there's no copyright issue. <laughs> and, uh, and, and actually, Jim, every single one of the pictures is our pictures. We have uh, we are blessed with two wonderful photographers who are helping us out. But let's take a look. Over here we have our announcement section. Anytime we have something new, immediately it gets posted there. You know, like when you mentioned about the third hotel, I'm going to put it up there. You know, just give me some sort of a text message here. Young Bird Show, uh, October 2014. Right beside it in red bold letters, it said reschedule. Take a look at the details. And when you click on that, it will take you to the Young Bird page. You know, we have the Grand National Program plan on bay. You can click there and you can see the program. You have the club meeting, which is always updated for the next meeting. Then we have some of our friends' websites in here. We do want to acknowledge some of those wonderful folks who are helping us out every single time. So I made some links to their websites, you know, and then this can be expanded. This is work in progress, by the way. So if you see something missing here, or if you see room for improvement, please do let me know. Um, so I, I put some of our friends' uh, website links up there. Over on the right hand side, this is the menu tab. So these are kind of like the pages that I'm working on right now. There can, there's more pages that are coming. I have those, I'm just not showing those in here. Uh, we have a link to our 
discussion group in here. We have a link to our YouTube channel here. We have a link to the MPA over here. See, when I click my mouse in here, it turns like a hand. So if you click on that, it takes you directly to the NPA website. There we go. When you click on the YouTube, it will take you to our YouTube channel. That's going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, right there you go. <coughs> and excuse me, because I'm just accessing internet to my phone, so it's a little bit slow. When you click on, you know, click us, it's going to take us right there on our not from our president, which is the second tab in here. Under this about us, we have, and I know you can't read it. The first one is a note from our president, which is this page. The next one is meet the club officers. <coughs> then the next one is a brief history, 1911 through today, passage through time, thanks to Bob Nolan. The next one is our accomplished trans years, that's work in progress. The last one is in loving memory, what we used to have before. I'm still working on that. Where it says meet our club members. Who's that guy? It's just taking a little bit of time to load. Who's that guy? That's some one of those rulers. That's what I thought about you folks. A lot has changed. Anyway, over here, uh, it's taking some time to load. Over here, we have a slideshow of every single one of our officers and board members with their names and their and then if you can see those dots, so it's going to shift, it's going to be a slideshow and everything. There's no right there. Okay. You're going to move them again. Right there's him again. And, and uh, the next one should be that, the, you know, uh, the, the third one should be that straight face guy right there. You know? Anyway, so if you scroll down, you will see a small description of each one of them. So this has a personal touch. This gives you an idea that you know, these are real people. This is not just somebody out there. And, and again, thanks to Bob Nolan who helped a lot in those stuff. But all of us, all of you folks are, are there. So people can actually see you and know a little bit about you right from our website. Then I'm gonna come to that later on. Okay, let me show you the young bird page. See, this is, this is what was before the Young Bird Show, and, and I have not changed the page. Uh, it's going to change, and it's going to show all of the highlights of the Young Bird Show that we just had. But look at it. it it's got everything that you want to know right on our website, <coughs> even to the extent that somebody, if they wanted to have an entry, they could download the form right there. They don't have to look for, okay, where, where do I get the pump? Actually, I didn't have that in the beginning, but somebody actually asked me through our website email address, can I have the form? So I said, well, you know what? I can put it right there. I sent her the link and she downloaded it it's right there. You click on it and you can type in your address and give you the direction straight up. So basically, it has all of the information. I. Uh, Bob, again, helped me get some of the pictures from the older, our, our previous Denver shows, which, which is here as, as just highlights, you know, and, and these are a little bit um, smaller scale because these are, you know, 2013 and, and older. Of course, 2014 is going to get more highlighted. Uh, and it's going to take a lot of time to download because there's quite a few pictures that we have, and these are real memories. You know, and, and we have, you know, see, a lot, 2012, 2011, you know, those younger folks love to see their pictures online, you know, yeah, they want to spend more time online, let them, but yeah. at the same time, connect them somehow to our hobby. Mm -hmm. um, so, we have these, and then, Media and Publications page, the PB is on there. The full PB is on there. Uh, it's a very large file, so I broke it down into four sections so that it's easier for people to download because you know some small connections you might get disconnected in the middle. Uh, it's easy and it works, right, Bob? You send it to a friend in Hawaii. The next day I, I, I published this page, Bob sent it to his friend in Hawaii. Hey, he would download it. So we know that if we send 
send it to our friend in Australia or Germany, you know, we don't have to send a physical copy of the emails to them. And actually, this website is referenced in, in one of the German speaking magazines too. So people can just come into our website and take a look at what's happening in our grand national, with our grand national. I'm gonna go up to that page pretty soon. But let me just show you, we, I put just one bulletin as an example. Um, and just wrote down in here that it's, it's, it's for our members in here. So if you want to be a member, contact us uh, so that you get the monthly bulletin from us. Our YouTube channels, uh, channel is here. So the latest videos always just updated in here. Uh, last month, it's pretty neat. The month before we had Drew Lovenstein, so that's right there. Um, so it, it, it's pretty neat actually, you know. It, 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 it has a lot of benefits. We we are working on a young member space. I'm not going to go into that. Lonnie and I, we are working on the young member space. There's a student compendium, which, uh, which we're working on with uh, uh, Ray Gardner and George Jelenlis. Uh, there's a contact us page, where, which shows us the monthly meeting, uh, you know, how we can be a member, how you can get in touch with us. Actually, this form has been used already, and it's been, this website has been published already like a month or two, right? People have used this form to contact us. At least 10 different people have used it since then. Um, so it's, it, it, it's got its own benefits. See, the top of meeting, meeting location is right here. Um, you can get the directions. Now, let me show you what we have on the grant bench because this is where um, I want to put more emphasis and, and I want to make some suggestions to based on it. This is uh, the famous picture of Tom Moss. I actually use a different picture than the one on TV. Tom sent me this one. Uh, but it, it, you, know, you can see we're, uh, we're trying to go with the theme California dreaming and uh, it, it has almost everything that you want to know about the Grand National. If you, in case you miss something that Fred has said in a meeting, or like, you know, I can see Bill Rivers missing tonight, but you can go in here and look at what's the latest and greatest. And we already have that for about 20 foreign countries. You say 20, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm almost in the head, right? So we already have that, you know. We, we already have, we have a nice section in here on the left-hand side uh, Bob, help me with that. We have all of the years that we had the Grand National, and we have a picture for every single year uh, that we had the Grand National, and we have the Ontario Provincial Center's picture for 2015. Uh, we have the PV link right here too on our website, on our Grand National page. We have the entry form here. We have, uh, you know, the. the Plates and the, the cash awards and all that yeah, stuff. We have a list of the participating specialty clubs. We have the uh, the t-shirts that the club is selling. We have a link to Fred and Fred. That's your Google number. That's not your original cell phone number. Um, so somebody can easily contact the show secretary through this, but his personal information is not actually revealed. This is a Google number which dials Fred's phone directly, but the other, the party calling doesn't know his actual cell phone number. And he can decide whether he wants to take it or not. We have a map for the convention center. We have the links to those hotels. We have a, a, a queue, a couple of links to visit California, and Los Angeles, and stuff like that. Um, so people can come in for a vacation or something like that. Anyway, it's, it's, it's very powerful. It's, it's, it's got almost everything that you want to know. And, and, by the way, here, we have download program below. Now, now the way it works is, you know, you say download program below, just click on it, and it will show you the program. See? So it's, it's, it's very powerful. It's, it's very easy to, 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 to go through. And the information is right at your fingertips. <laughs> fingertips, <laughs> literally fingertips. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of time. I, I think my biggest drive is is you folks. You know the treatment that I receive from you folks, and and uh, the other thing that helps is when you look at the the you know finished product, and if you get good feedback from people, that's what makes you happy. That's what gives you the drive. 
I don't sleep more than five hours a night, and I wake up at least five, six times every single night to, you know, because I have small kids, they sleep with me and my wife. It's in our culture, and then kids sleep with us in the same bed, so I have to wake up five, six times. But I'm, I'm kind of used to it. Uh, I, I know I will not be continuing it for a long time. Now the website is at a stage where I need support from every single one of you. And you guys need to tell me what you want to see in here, what needs to be updated, what, what needs to go in which place and location. Even if you're just a general phone number, number, email me, let me know what needs to be updated, what needs to be on there. Uh, the other thing is that all of these things, please, you know, use it and send it to others. Uh, one of the things Bob mentioned actually, and I sent an email to uh, uh, Lenny and, um, and Kenny, uh, that the NPA website actually doesn't have much about the Grand National. And I think it's ironic that they don't have a link to our speech. Grand National Show. See, here they have, this is the NPA website, here they have Grand National Show. You click on more, that takes you to the Grand National, okay. That's their page. They have the PB. Some of the stuff that's in the PB has changed. You know, like the hotels, the two hotels that are in there have changed. Uh, I would say the board members, if you approach the MPN and, and tell them that, hey, put a direct link to our website. We have, uh, we have all the updated information on to our website. Put a direct link right, right in the middle of our website so that people can access all of this information. That would be great advertisement for, for our club, plus great advertisement for the upcoming national tour. So if you can please uh, you know, make it an action item from your end, I really appreciate that. I think that's a wonderful idea. Bob, Bob also told me about it, and I, I agree with the channel. That's very nice. Bob. Anyway, anyway. Uh, again, I want to stress that uh, you know, Bob actually requested me to make this presentation, and I'm doing it not to get a pat on my back. These are your tools, meaning the club's tools. I'm just a worker for the club, just like all of you are. Um, but use this, and we can actually adapt ourselves to the change of time. We don't always have to think negative about the change of time and how this may be our lives because we are losing fanciers and stuff like that. Rather than complaining more, maybe we can do some positive actions and work together to narrow that generation gap. And I want to come back at the end of my presentation to that same thing that I said, the biggest thing of my observation was the generation gap. Maybe we can work together using some of these tools. Of course, this is not the end of it. Uh, there's a lot more to it. So maybe we need more brainstorming, and maybe the board and the officers need to start that, and slowly and slowly it will be spread to the club members in general, and together we can do something great for the next generation that's coming. Thank you so much for your time tonight.